morning. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're going to do here today. Um, Paul, Neil, and Tom. And we're going to um, talk a little bit about some of the things that happened here, that happened within BASF. But you'll also see some cameras and some folks around. We're broadcasting uh, today's discussion live via YouTube. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at Brownfield, and um, check out this and, and some of the other great things that we do within our company. Before we get started, for our viewers that aren't necessarily here, Tom, can I have you tell just a little bit about uh, the facility here and um, some of the things that, that go on and why we're here today? Sure. So uh, once again, welcome to BSF Geismer. Uh, the BSF Geismer site is the largest BASF site in North America. So you came straight to the straight to the top. Uh, 24 sites, and we have what's called an integrated Verbund chemical complex. Uh, this is where we'll take uh, general raw materials, everything from natural gas, ethylene, and through multiple steps in these 24 facilities, take something small and then transform it into something very, very special at the end. All right. As for introductions, Paul? Good morning, everyone. My name is Paul Ray, and I'm the Senior Vice President for BASF Agricultural Products, located in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's great to see our customers here today. Thank you for traveling all the way you did to join us here at the Geismar site, but also looking forward to the Commodity Classic later this week. Tom, you're next. Sure. So, Tom Ura, I'm uh, the uh, Site General Manager uh, for the, the BASF site here. Also, couldn't be excited. Uh, for us, our customers come first. And it's a true honor for the men and women who work in our facility to actually get a chance to meet the people who they produce for, right? That's a huge, huge thing. So as many people as you get a chance to see and let them know that your customer helps because it really puts a face on what they do. It really helps give them a reason why do we want to make great products for, for, for the great people that it serves. And you. Good morning, everyone. My name's Neil Bentley, and I'm the Director of Marketing for our U.S. crop business. Uh, BASF has a North American business, and one particular part of that in our agricultural business is our U.S. crop business, which I'm the Director of Marketing of. And I, I really appreciate everyone taking the time to come visit us here at BASF. For me, the cool part of being here is seeing all of the things that BASF does to surround you. You get the view of BASF from an agricultural products company, but you also interface with BASF each and every day, and you probably don't often know about it. And so today you also get the opportunity to learn a little bit more about how BASF surrounds you each and every day. And, and we certainly hope that you take away, and the next time you're using a magic eraser as an example, you have a good idea of where that's coming from and, and, and also see BASF around your home. All right, you ready to get started? We've talked to growers, and many of them say that most of all, they trust BASF products and the service that goes along with it. Let's start first and talk about the philosophy that's behind that. Well, that's good to hear because that's uh, a lot of the time and effort we put behind our products is trying to build that trustful relationship with all of our customers right around the world. And it really is rooted in the fact that we uh, have been involved and in, in a leader in the agricultural industry for over 100 years. So uh, it goes back a long way, and uh, we've uh, come a long way in that time as an industry, but also as a company. And if I look at the breadth of our portfolio and the ways that we can actually help farmers improve their productivity today, it's never been stronger. And we'll talk more later about some of the innovations we have coming, but it really does start with having a good understanding of what the growers' needs are and how we can help them get more from every acre each and every year. And this year that's going to be a little more challenging because there's lots of... Uh, uh, challenges on the horizon, and uh, we're just there to stand with the farmers to help them do better with their crop each year. Tom, what about from your angle? Yeah, from, from a manufacturing standpoint, certainly our role is, is really focusing on that quality commitment and innovation, right? How do we every single day work hard to meet those quality expectations and delight our customer? And, and how do we innovate? How do we innovate in manufacturing? For us, it's continuous improvement. Uh, it's that drive to look at every work process we do, look at the products we're pushing out, and, and think about how do we make that better? How do we collaborate? We've got on the Geismer site over 1,000 people that work here. 1,000 people, 
plus around 600 full-time contractors that will do jobs as well. So that's a lot of people to coordinate and make sure we're doing things the same way and, and consistently getting better. So we've actually established continuous improvement teams to look at not only our work processes, but the products we have on how to get that real fire in your belly to make it better every single day. Does that also, the philosophy, go along with growing smart? Yeah, I was going to come back to two words that we use in our U.S. crop business, grow smart. And I'm, I'm excited to hear that there's a lot of trust being built with our customers, and that's really what grow smart is about in U.S. crop. We have four key components of grow smart. One is starting with the industry's uh, leading sales force and people, whether that's the people who are producing the, the material here in Geismar or the sales folks that you're dealing with each and every day from a business rep or an innovation specialist perspective. We want to put the best people in the marketplace that you can trust to, to really sit down with you, understand what's going on in your operation, and then build the best recommendation, the best approach forward. So that's, that's really first key from a Grow Smart perspective. The second is taking a, a very broad and innovative portfolio. When we think about BSF's portfolio, it's grown pretty dramatically over the past couple of years, uh, the past several years. We've launched several products, many that uh, we started off in, in new segments. You know, I think all it was something 60 products over the last uh, 10 years, if I remember right. So we're bringing a really innovative portfolio to the marketplace that's this very broad. And, and what do I mean by broad? Oftentimes you hear about what are, what's my herbicide options, what are my fungicide or insecticide options, and now BASF is getting into the fertility management uh, uh, area with Lemus and looking at urease inhibitors. And we think about the regulatory environment, we think about what's going on with, with how we maintain that investment in our nitrogen. It's a really important and key investment that we're making every year. So how do I maximize that use, especially when crop and commodity prices are tight? Um, we're also looking in seed enhancements, and you think about flowability and seed spacing, really making sure that we have optimal seed spacing. These are all elements that optimize each and every day the spend that we're making on our, in our operation. And so taking the people in the portfolio from a breadth perspective and then really personalizing that in your operation. So you know every field's different. Every farm has different soil types, different weather conditions. Uh, things happen throughout the year. And so working together with our sales organization, how can we personalize the recommendation for you that really maximizes or optimizes your opportunity in your operation? And finally, protection. When you do all of that, or when you pull a great plan together, it really brings protection, that peace of mind to you. And so Grow Smart, I believe, is, is key in how we build trust. It's, it's how we really move that forward through those, those four pieces. And it also, it, it seems like the representatives work as partners with the growers as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, as Neil mentioned, each farming operation has uh, you know, various differences, how farmers want to push their yields. Each field's a little different. I think what Neil's highlighting is our commitment to really help growers get the very best out of that field they can, given its particular you know, moisture level or its particular fertility. Uh, and that's really what a commitment we have to have our field team well equipped to that knowledge and with the time to spend with growers on a one-to-one -one basis to really generate the very best recommendation for the year ahead. You alluded to tighter margins in 2016. What is the BASF perspective when it comes to those uncertainties that farmers around the country are facing this year? Yeah, I think it's fair to say this year there are a lot of uncertainties, uh, not just within agriculture, but I think within the business and uh, the global economy overall. And I think uh, as I look back in my time in uh, farming, which goes all the way back to being on my family farm back, uh, back home, I think farmers have demonstrated over time great resiliency in uh, tougher times. And it's obviously a cyclical industry. We've seen some really great commodity prices in the last few years and some great yield increases. And uh, the next few years look a little tighter, there's no doubt about that. And so I think farmers this year are going to pay a lot more attention to what decisions they make and how can they continue to make those decisions so that they improve their efficiency, reduce their risk and ultimately improve their yield. So to some extent, I think the next few years are critical because the decisions that farmers will make in these tougher times really set up for what we believe will be better times ahead. What about on the producer side of things, Neil? Well, I, think, I think we did a study uh, that, that was interesting and we might get a bit of a giggle here. We had a, a bit of a giggle on the bus that nine out of 10 farmers are concerned about commodity prices. And, and we were concerned why 10 out of 10 farmers aren't concerned about commodity prices and, and what's going to happen to the one who isn't uh, right now. But certainly, 
you know, as Paul alluded to, mar margins are tighter. There's no question about that. Uh, and, and we see those headwinds in the marketplace. When we think about, you know, exchange rates and some of the disadvantages that we see as American producers from exchange rates, there's no question that, that a stronger U.S. dollar is putting pressure on our ability to export and keep that demand higher. You know, so th these are issues. And, of course, we're always dealing with weather. Uh, we're dealing with changes in the environment. But there we believe some tailwinds in the market too. There's a, a strong U.S. economy. We continue to see that represented even in the latest releases that are coming out of uh, out of the uh, Federal Reserve. We're also seeing uh, that that you know with that strong economy, we have relatively strong balance sheets, and we've been able to build those balance sheets up over the past couple of years. So, from a from our perspective, you know we're we're looking to partner with with our producers, with with our with our farmers. We really want to integrate with you to make sure that we can optimize those decisions. And oftentimes, you know, I think when we say that, optimization might mean, hey, BASF wants to come out and try to convince you to spend more. No, no, we really want to have a consultative co conversation. We want to understand what's going on in every operation. That's why we're developing new products each and every day. You know, as, as an example, we've often talked about fungicides and how we can use fungicides in our operation. Headline AMP was one of those, well, it started with Headline and how we're using Headline AMP. In a, in a tassel situation of corn, that's progressed to headline amp uh, that we see a lot of farmers, especially last year, had tremendous success with uh, in, in, in raising their yields. But coming back to every field's different. You know, BASF's now developed in furrow technologies like Xantheon. And Xantheon's a new fungicide that can be used in corn, in furrow. And what this means is you, ha you can put that personalized plan together. When you're talking with BASF and they say fungicide, you don't just have to assume we're talking about a tassel application in corn, but we can talk about a customized application for what's right in your operation. And so we think there's really tools to manage the risks that are in front of farmers today. Maybe uh, building on that with another example, uh, one tool that we provide farmers that we're seeing tremendous interest in this year is our financing offer. And while uh, margins are a little tighter, farmers are more concerned where are they going to put that precious capital. And uh, it's fair to say it's tighter this year than ever. We offer a financing tool so farmers can make those early purchases on that new technology and uh, actually receive harvest terms to free up that working capital so they can make investments elsewhere in their farm uh, at interest-free levels, I might add. So it really is a real benefit to farmers to buy their product early and to manage their risk for capital by uh, using our finance uh, advantage tool. Does it also maybe reinforce that working with the BASF representative as a partner to put the right plan in place and, and maximize our returns on investments this year? Absolutely. I think, uh, as we said, margins are tighter, so a plan is more critical than ever. And I think uh, the farmers I've spoken to in the last few months are really uh, determined to still keep pushing their yields because that's the, that's the, the, the critical uh, issue they have to address. How do I keep improving the productivity of my farm? And uh, it's really about not to uh, necessarily minimize cost, it's to optimize and improve yield to lower that cost per unit of bushel that they produce. And I think when you look at it through that way, you make different investment decisions. As Neil just highlighted, in a fungicide application, it's a cost for sure, but you have to look at the benefits on the other side and what it can do for you to manage your crop and improve your productivity and yield overall. And the data is there, in good years and bad. Fungicides, as an example, improve the yield of that crop consistently year after year, particularly with the new brands that uh, Neil mentioned. Another good example of managing risk that I think we have to be really mindful of is the prevalence of weed resistance right across the United States. It's really come up from uh, behind over the last few years to really challenge farmers and how they can manage what used to be easier to control weeds that are now really, really difficult. And I think skimping on our herbicide rotations, for instance, say, is not a good decision for the future because we know once we get resistance, it's really difficult to manage it. So I think, again, careful planning with a BASF representative on what's the right herbicide for that particular field, given the historical use of herbicides, looking at the benefits for a particular field could receive from, say, a fungicide or a seed treatment or infrared treatment is really important so that we push those yields and really lower the cost of our unit production. Neil, did you want to respond as well? Yeah, you know, um, I was thinking about weed resistance and, and you know, we, when we think about weed resistance, we, we often think about herbicides and we think about mode of action, right? And, and one of the things that we've done a lot of research on at BASF is it's not necessarily the mode of action that makes a difference in your herbicide use pattern, but it's the site of action. And there's some really great examples about two very, what we would believe, dissimilar or, or similar herbicides being in different sites of action that really have influence on the farm. 
that BASF, we actually have the most registered sites of action in our herbicide portfolio. So I think that really gives the ability for that customization component. Uh, I was just having a conversation the other day about what would a three-year herbicide plan look like through my rotation? How do we start to really, I think, think longer term about how we manage that, that farm and that operation? You know, most, most of the folks I talk to are thinking about my, my crop rotation, but are we thinking about our herbicide rotation along with that crop rotation? And, and that's why we're launching new products. You know, Armazon Pro is a really good example. Uh, this year of bringing two really tried and true herbicides together. Uh, Donathenamid, which one of the precursors is actually manufactured here in, in Geismer along with uh, Tepramazone. Um, you know, bringing those two together in, in a herbicide that pr provides the best flexibility to a farmer. You know, because every year is different, every situation is different, and we want to make sure that we, ha we have the ability to organize those sites of action to organize that portfolio in a way that's really going to optimize the opportunity for everyone here. We talk about maximizing efficiency. Tom, does that come back into the, uh, the manufacturing side of things as well? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the advantage of, of the size we have is, is the integration. Um, so when you look at, our, for example, the S. Moiko plant that we have here, it is integrated into a facility uh, that, uh, that is also connected to other manufacturing plants. The good thing with that is it can significantly lessen our environmental impact. So instead of having to move products back and forth, you know, you, you produce it in one plant, you bring it to another. Uh, it allows our employees to stay focused on their job at hand rather than running all over the place or, or having too many handoffs. And our ongoing commitment for, for financial investment in our facilities. As I mentioned before, we've invested over 400 million just in my site alone in, in new projects, whether it's formic acid or S. Moipa modernization, S. Moipa 2. So we also realize that we have to take a two to three year outlook. It's not just about how much you spend, but are you spending it the right way on the right projects to optimize the overall reliability and the benefits so that we can consistently year after year deliver the products that our customer needs. Does it help with efficiencies as well as we talk about that with the fact that the company is integrated? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the uh, model that uh, Tom referenced earlier of Vabond is something we've applied right around the world to a number of our major manufacturing sites. And so it really does create uh, much more efficient sites that are able to use the precursors. And really one uh, production process leads into the next quite naturally. And so it creates this efficiency that Tom referenced right around the world. But from a business perspective, it's also really helpful, I think, for our customers to appreciate that with BASF, you're not just dealing with an ag chem company. You're dealing with uh, what is today the largest chemical company in the world. And that means we're able to access the full suite of technologies right across the chemical industry to provide solutions for our products. And a good example would be the colorants that come on your seed treatments. Uh, that comes from uh, industries outside of traditional agriculture. And we're, getting, we're accessing the very latest innovations and technologies we have from polymers and, uh, and colorants. And that's something that the average ag chem company just wouldn't have access to. So it really gives us, we believe, a commercial advantage in the marketplace. We've had a little bit of history. We've talked a little bit about the present. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about innovations. BASF has always been a leader in agricultural innovations. What are some of the things in, in the pipeline and innovations that you guys have coming that we can talk about today? Well, we have a lot of new products, and as Neil referenced, we've, in the last few years, released a lot of new uh, innovations for the uh, American farmer, and the outlook for those innovations going forward is also very, very strong. And I want to reference back to it comes from that long-term commitment to research and development. Uh, to give a, uh, everyone here a perspective, it takes us, on average, about 8 to 12 years to bring a new innovation to you on the farm. So when you finally see that Amazon Pro jug uh, on your farm this year, uh, it's taken us about 8 to 12 years to get it into that jug ready for you. So it's a long-term view. It takes, uh, to get that one molecule that we discover, we start with 140,000 different potential leads. And then over time, we get down to the one that matters that will make the best result for the grower. 
And then uh, after doing all that research, it takes around somewhere between 250 to 260 million dollars of, uh, of investment from us to bring that product uh, to a farmer so they can, are ready to use after going through all the biology, all of the research, all of the regulatory processes. So the best comparison I could draw would be think of your pharmaceuticals you see in your medical uh, shelf back at home. A lot of research going into those drugs to make sure they're safe to use and they're highly efficacious. Our industry is very much the same. We have to pass the most rigorous regulatory approvals process, I think, of any industry. Uh, we undertake a long-term review of the, of the products and the compounds and the effects they have not only on the, on the weed or the, or the insect or the disease before we release it. And then once we're ready finally to go, we feel very confident that we've brought some innovation to the farmer that will really help them uh, improve their productivity. And that really, to summarise, uh, something that, that there's a number that sticks in my mind every day, is that uh, each and every day, 365 days a year, we're investing $2 million a day just in agricultural research so that you have the solutions you need 10 years down the road. And that's the kind of horizon that we're looking at. But if I bring it back into more shorter term focus from a North American perspective, we'll be bringing to market between now and 2020 over 50 new products for uh, North American farmers, both here in the US and in Canada that will comprise of 12 active ingredients and a range of different product solutions right across the full spectrum, whether it be new fungicides, new insecticides, new herbicides, and new seed treatments, and as Neil mentioned, uh, new uh, nutrient management tools as well. So you're going to see a lot more from DSF. We hope that we can partner more with you in the future as our portfolio expands and farmers can hopefully have an even better relationship uh, based on trust in the future. Yeah. Yeah, th th this is one of my most favorite topics because bringing innovation each and every day to the marketplace is so much fun. It, it is really rewarding to see 10 years of work, 12 years of work go into that final use product and then to see the smile on, on the faces of those here in the room or those listening online say, this really worked for me. You know, I, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the payoff that we look for uh, each and every day. And so yeah, I think about the products, you know, one, one key thing that we're going to see happening over the next year really is the introduction of dicamba tolerant soybeans. We've already seen dicamba tolerant cotton being launched into the marketplace. And maybe most people don't know, but BASF is going to have a significant presence in that new cropping rotation or in that new in that new trade. We're going to have products available for farmers to use both in dicamba tolerant cotton and dicamba tolerant soybeans right out of the gate. And I think that comes from a little bit of our research for Bloom. You know, we're we're not just bringing new dicambas to the market, or we're not just bringing dicamba to the market as it exists today, but enhanced formulations of dicamba to the marketplace that can give the confidence of the farmer that when I'm making the application in the right way, it's going to stay where, where I intend it to be. And so a lot of those issues that, that you see uh, out in the press around bringing new traits to the marketplace, whether it be the enlist trait or the dicamba trait, some of that fear. BASF having more than 50 years of experience with dicamba, we're really excited to have the opportunity to bring all of that knowledge back to you with some great products. And couple that with the portfolio we talked about earlier. You know, because if, if we think about dicamba, it's not just going to be about, you know, like it was in the, in the late 90s, now I have glyphosate, so now I can go out and just change my system. We're gonna have to steward this a little bit differently. We're going to have to think about that crop much more differently than when we converted to glyphosate in the past. And that's why having a great pre-herbicide portfolio is going to be so important. And we continue to bring new products to the marketplace in that pre-portfolio because we know different parts of the marketplace have different weed control needs. And so how do we continue as an organization to really bring the best system to you for that entire soybean acre or that entire cotton acre? That's really our goal. and I think. One of the highlights from our innovation pipeline that I want to make sure everyone listening and leaving here knows to come and search out. You know, take a look at BASF, take a look at our website, learn more about how we're bringing those products to the market, especially for this really important change that's coming. Right now, over I would say the next 18 months, as we've seen the deregulation in the U.S. and also the import approval in China. As challenges present themselves within the agriculture industry, does that change the innovation and in research? Does a product maybe get more attention because of a, a problem maybe that pops up uh, for growers around the country? 
I think it does. Um, let's face it, the farmers here know well, uh, Mother Nature is always changing and always evolving. Biology is never in a steady state, it's always developing. And probably the one example for me that comes to mind would be uh, when we decided to release uh, Kixor in 2010, really gave farmers uh, a really important tool, really in a timely manner, because weed resistance was really starting to become a big challenge for them. And they needed a new tool, a new solution to really help them manage that. But you think about it, what I said earlier, that decision to actually bring Kixor to marketplace was actually made much earlier than that, in like the early 2000s, where we had to put you know, hard money on the table and say, we believe that farmers will need a broader range of herbicides uh, than they currently have, because Mother Nature will keep evolving, and they'll need those solutions even in a Roundup Ready world. And uh, it was a pretty bold decision back then to invest in herbicides at a time when most people were saying, hey, glyphosate will be just fine. But we believe, based on our history and our long tradition of research, that there would be need for other, other, other herbicides. And we've seen that right across our portfolio. That's why we're continually investing in products like Headline. I'm sure many farmers here would have heard of Headline, and I hope you've used it and seen great results. It really was a breakthrough technology in the fungicide arena that really did set a whole new benchmark for fungicide use. But we're never happy with that. We want the next big product, and that's why we, in a few years later, launched Xenium to really supplement F500, and a product that many farmers, I hope, are using called Creaxor, which still contains F500, but also brings another mode of action, another chemistry, for even better results. And that's the kind of evolution we're talking about in agriculture that's constantly going on. So I'm wondering, if I'm a farmer out there, what's that mean for you? And what I would suggest you should think about is, are you updating your recommendations you're making on your fields on an annual basis? Because there are new solutions available today that weren't available a few years ago. And I think it's in these more maybe challenging times, we're probably more open to questioning what we're doing. And I think it's a great opportunity, you've still got time to go back, talk to your advisor, work with your retailer, and hopefully a BASF innovation specialist to really sit back and say, what changes should I make to my crop protection program this year to improve my results because everyone wants a better result this year more than ever. I would assume that there's also has to be innovations on the manufacturing side of things as well. Sure, I mean, you, know, you already heard Paul say, I mean, he's trying to stay ahead and, and what's next. And when you talked about the entire time, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in the end, I'm the end, right? So you have eight years and okay, good, the decision's made, now go do this. Tom, go build it. Uh, it's not like you can go to um, Cabela's or to Home Depot and put one of these things together. So it takes us hundreds of millions of dollars and three years to go build facilities. Uh, to keep up with the innovation is, is why we exist in manufacturing. So as these great new ideas come out, there is change in chemistry. There's new things that have to be done. Uh, and that's, that's, that's where uh, the, we fit into this whole verbund, right? Once it gets done, Good, now you guys go build it, please run it, make sure that we're doing the right things and delivering the quality. So that's, uh, that's why we exist. Maybe I can just jump in for a second. You may. It's okay too. Uh, <laughs> I will not tell you no. <laughs> no, okay, good. Um, you know, I, as, we bring new, as we bring new products to the marketplace, and I, I think we see this across the industry, the complexity that we face you know, is so much higher than it was just five, six, seven years ago. You know, we, we think about the decisions that we're making in our operations today and the decisions that we make and how we produce, you know, a product. They're, they're, they're phenomenally different. I remember growing up in my little small town back in Minnesota and working for farmers in the area and working at the grain elevator. And it, was, it was completely different. And so now you have urease inhibitors, seed treatments, multiple sites of action. Which fungicide application should I use? When should I plant? What should my seed spacing be? How should I affect the down pressure on my plant? You know, you have all of these things going on, and I think that's really what where we're trying to differentiate from an innovation perspective is also innovation in business models, right? And and how are we bringing the right people, the best people, to you to help sort through all that complexity? You know, we're all sitting at little tables here in this room. There are only so many seats at this boardroom table, right? And and that's where I think BASF can really make a difference because we can bring the people to the marketplace that have. To, to you that really have broad experience, not just in crop protection chemicals. We've, we've, we have an entire innovation specialist staff who's had a lot of experience in seed and retail to really sit down with you and think about all of that complexity out there, sort through it and make the right decisions. So we often, 
we often start talking about BASF, the chemical company. We get really product focused pretty quickly, but I want to make sure that we're also talking about how we can really support you from a service and business model perspective and really making those best decisions each and every day. And maybe building on that, I think it's uh, well known to our audience here as a farmer, you probably only get about maybe 35 to 40 harvests in a lifetime. And when you think about it in that context, how are you going to impact next year's uh, harvest is critically important because it doesn't just affect next year, it affects however many harvests you've got to come. And so I think having the right people around you to make those decisions has never been more important. You really get that sense that BASF is all in with its growers. Absolutely. I mean, we feel very passionate about the agricultural industry. And we're proud to be a leader within it. And we're also excited about the future potential for agriculture. It's a tremendous responsibility that we all have in this room to ensure a, a safe, uh, nutritious, and plentiful supply of food for all of the planet. And uh, I think Nino Farmers, that's probably what fires them up the most each and every day. They know they're making a difference. And we're the same. We feel proud to be a part of this industry. We're excited by what we've achieved in the past and are excited about what we see in the, in the future. And that's why we're putting uh, our investments on the table each and every year with great people, great products, but also R&D for the long run. Neil? You, you just expect me to say something. That's the, <laughs> we're all getting that. I, I think that you, I, I think that you would have that same sense as well. That's right. You, you know, I, we're, we're, we are in it for the long run. We are completely invested, um, and and it goes right from right from top to bottom. Like, you know, all of the research and development, uh, all of the, the the products that are available, the way we can personalize. I mean, there's there's just a pride uh, in in helping helping farmers get the most from every acre. You know, uh, we we started with Grow Smart. Uh, just a couple of years ago, and we've actually now had the opportunity to run about 150 large-scale trials across the U.S. in many different crops, and uh, we win 90% of them. So we, we've we've been able to set uh, yield farm yield average records 90% of the time, or or and actually win those 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 40-acre contests of 90% of, of the time, and and that's a telling statistic, right? We can we can help farmers get more. The, the more telling statistic to me was 96% of the time, the farmer said, I want you to come back. Right? It was, so it was about the experience that the farmer had with BASF uh, and really how we work together to create the best and the most optimal path forward. And I, I think that's the level of investment that really makes a difference. Yeah, sure, we, we want to win. We want you to win. Um, but we want you to have a great experience doing it. And ultimately, that's the loyalty that we believe we can create when you have just fantastic satisfaction with, with BASF. I do see some younger folks in the audience, and, and I'm assuming parents and grandparents as well. BASF really is continuing to also help to feed the ag education and feed the pipeline for, for ag industry folks in the future. Can you talk a little bit about some of the ways that, that you have done that and are continuing to make investments in communities and workforce development? Yeah, we're doing a lot because um, <clears throat> we see it as critical to the industry that we have all the talent, the best uh, potential uh, and smartest people around the world working in agriculture because uh, the challenges we face are big and we need smart people to solve our, solve our challenges. So from a BASF perspective, we've taken the steps over the last four or five years to really invest in helping uh, university graduates make their way into the industry. And uh, we have what we call a professional development program. So if you've got sons and daughters out there in their uh, later years of university, we'd love to hear from them. And what we do in that program is actually bring uh, university graduates into our organization and actually put them through a fairly intensive on-the-job 18-month training program, which involves time in our, in our uh, headquarters, we're working in a marketing organization and, and different areas of, the, of our organization, and then moving out into the field to actually work with customers and our field team. And it gives uh, a youngest talent a real opportunity to see the breadth of agriculture, see the breadth of the ASF, and really set them on their way for a long-term career in, uh, in agriculture, which we think is really important. Because it's probably fair to say 10 or 20 years ago, there wasn't quite so many opportunities in agriculture. But today, as we look forward, We'll need those brightest minds on our challenges so that we can continue to successfully produce uh, all the food we're expected to. So that's just one example. And uh, another really uh, clear example that we'll share with everyone tomorrow will be our scholarships that we award 
um, uh, high school students in association with the various uh, trade associations, the National Corn Growers, the American Soybean Association, and the National Wheat Foundation. Tomorrow we'll be providing $15,000 of scholarships for the next generation of university students who are looking to study in agriculture. And they may or may not end up in BASF. We, we hope first that they stay in the agriculture industry. Um, we hope they join BASF, but some will return back to their family farms. Others will go and work for others in the industry. But it's with that view to looking forward, we need the smartest people in agriculture, and we have a responsibility to help support that. And Tom, you guys are doing stuff here in Louisiana, and specifically here at Geismar, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so it, it, it's, it, this is, when, when you look at our commitment to workforce development, when you look at commitments into the community, especially around who's next, right? Um, we're doing so much. I mean, last year in this tent, we celebrated a 150 year history of the company. 150 years. We're not in it for the short term. So when you look at looking down that road, as Paul was saying, it's not just worrying about this year, we're worrying about the next three to five. So we're fortunate. I mean, being here in Louisiana, there's so much pride and passion around agriculture. It doesn't take long to hear about uh, you know, Washington Parish watermelons. It doesn't take long to hear about St. Francisville blueberries. Communities are so proud about what they make, they actually take their community name and put it on front of it, right? It, it extends even to the seafood, right? Louisiana certified seafood. There's, and so you really start to understand this is personal. This is really personal. So we are fortunate here in this community, we have a great school like LSU. So it has a great ag department. And so we utilize those people, even from the arborist. We have tremendous four or 500 year old oak trees here that we bring that expertise in and how to manage, how to maintain that. We have butterfly gardens we've sent up. We have done a lot of things to, to really help live in harmony with the community, and which also includes providing scholarship money, provide internships, provide those summer programs so that that next generation of student, that next generation, that next child who wants to be inspired to go into chemistry. We have kids labs, right? I mean, my own children today, my goodness. I mean, it's everything is about internet and I want this and I want that. Why don't you get excited about science? And so when you see those hands-on experiential things, then the light bulb comes on. And so our daily commitment with all the employees to bring in and to do more, right, at this site, we impact hundreds of people's lives every year just through the opportunities that we give them to live and work and experience what it's like to be part of this industry. So providing products to protect the now and making investments into the future of not only the products and, and uh, the crops of the future, but the pipeline of, of workforce development and students as well, right? All right, we're about out of time today. One last question, we have an audience question if you guys are up for it. <laughs> what is the greatest challenges that, that you see or see for the agriculture industry in the next 40 years? Yeah, 40 years is a long time. <laughs> but, um, and let me add to it, how do you uh, propose and put BASF at, at the helm to, to help solve those challenges? Sure. Well, we certainly, um, as I said earlier, committed to being a leader in the agricultural industry here uh, in Louisiana, but also right around the, the country. So for us, we want to be at the forefront of the industry. Um, but if I look across the industry, uh, I think a challenge we're going to face together, and, and it's not a small challenge either, it goes beyond just the, the hustle and bustle of the, of the particular challenges we have this year, it's really protecting that license to operate. And think forward 40 years, we'll have close to 70% of the Earth's population living in cities. We'll be in urban areas. They won't understand what you do. They'll challenge it a lot. And they really will be our new boss uh, more than they are even today. They'll want to know how their food's produced. And I think as an industry, we have to do a lot of work today to really make sure that that license to operate, that freedom to farm the right way, based on scientific research, is critically important. Because otherwise we'll end up with outcomes that, that make it really hard to farm and really hard to provide the, the plentiful uh, supply of food that we know we're going to need. Um, that's one I think that the whole industry will face. Anybody else? Yeah, and, and, and I'd like to add on to it, coming back to all of the things that we've really discussed here today, the complexity of farming is not, it's not going to be any easier, it's not going to be any less in that 40 year time horizon. Uh, and that, that license to operate is so important. So, you know, how are we bringing a diverse talent pool to 
agriculture to really help us solve those problems. You know, who, who would have thought 25 years ago that our tractors would be driving themselves, you know, and, and that we'd be able to plant 24 hours a day? You know, we, we, this wasn't, you know, conceivable, right? How, how many people are watching YouTube, you know, catching up on the latest news clips while we're, we're making a pass, you know, catching that on the phone? This, this advancement in technology has really, you know, attracted a new, a new set of talent to agriculture. And I, I, so what's the next wave of talent that we need to bring to help us solve the, the license to operate, the freedom to operate? Uh, because that, that consumer is really becoming each and every day more and more of the person who's really shaping what it is that we need to do in our operations. And every farmer that I know is a steward of their land. Every farmer I know wants to be sustainable and really think about the next generations in their operation, right? We're not just in this for, for us. We're in it for our families. We're in it for, you know, that legacy that we put together, that we've built or that our, our fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers have built for us. And so we want to keep that going, and that's where I think BASF can be so helpful. How can we bring new technologies? How can we bring new sustainability measures, stewardship opportunities, better products that reduce use rates, better products that are more effective, uh, that, that, that we can more easily steward, that stay in the right place when we make the application. You know, these, I think, are all technologies that I'm really proud to be a part of BSF, have that research burbooned because I believe that we can continue to challenge all the great scientists within our organization to bring these technologies and the people to the forefront that will truly make a difference over, the, over that, our, at least our lifetime, while, while we continue to farm. And for me, I mean, I know that that doesn't end or just even begin at the farm. You want to know where it comes back. And so that's why my commitment, right, my commitment, we've reduced our emissions to air and water by 60% over the last 10 years. Not because somebody's beating down my door and telling me I have to do it, because I know that's what I want. That's, what, that's my responsibility back to my family, my community, and my customers. So understanding what's important to you, what are you expecting out of, your manufacturers, and then how can I contribute to that is, an, is a key tenet for me. Gentlemen, any closing remarks before we wrap things up and, and uh, uh, head to lunch? No, again, just like to uh, thank our customers for joining us here today. It's been great to see you all. Uh, we really do value your uh, relationship we have together. We'd like to wish you good luck for the season ahead. We hope that we can play a role in improving your productivity this year, and we hope that you enjoyed the uh, our information session this morning. So thanks very much for being with us. We're proud to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I'm Megan Grabner for Brownfield. <laughs>